Okay, here's the X-Lock version 3.0 VFO stabilizer kit from Cumbria Designs in England. And I've started uh, assembly on this. Um, I would call this definitely like an intermediate level kit. I wouldn't recommend making it your first one. There's a lot of components that fit on this small board and they're very close together. Also, it's a double-sided board, so you've got traces on this side, and then you've got traces on the bottom here as well. And you have to make sure that the parts, all your solder connections are good, everything's clean. So I recommend starting with a clean solder tip on your iron, and uh, just the right amount of heat. And then check each connection with a magnifying glass because they're that small and I've already uh, corrected several cases where I didn't the holes were not completely filled up with solder so uh, continue assembly here's what the uh, the manual looks like assembled unit and I'll uh, continue uh, soldering these things and getting all these components installed And then we'll look at uh, installing it in the radio. Here's a look at the components that mount on the board. This bag has all the uh, semiconductors in it and the PIC IC that's the heart of the unit. And then there's another bag that has all the passive components, the resistors, the capacitors. Uh, they IC socketed everything, so I guess that's up to you whether you want to install those I probably will the header pins for the connectors are there so there's a lot to go on a very small board here so you have to work carefully be sure you get every part installed in the right position and polarities correct in the case of the semiconductors and uh, and the capacitors the electrolytics okay well here's the completed uh, VFO stabilizer kit I uh, finished building this a couple of days ago and went ahead and installed it in this radio which is a radio that needs it more than ever. It's an ICO 753 and it's a radio that was notorious for drift and basically I've got the board just kind of zip tied off here to a little uh, bracket that I put in and basically I've got uh, RF coming in from the output of the VFO. Power is coming in here, uh, 12 volt, that I took from the, uh, over here, this yellow wire coming up out of the underside of the chassis is 12 volt AC filament voltage, which is actually up here, it's running the dial lights on the meter and on the, uh, the dial here in the front panel. Well, I went ahead and put another little terminal strip in, added a diode and a capacitor, and that gives me uh, 12 volt DC without any regulation. And then on the board here, there's 5 volt and 8 volt regulators. They look like those tiny little uh, black transistors. And they're filtering the, the 12 unregulated coming in down to 5 and 8. And... Uh, I have a transmit receive line here that goes to ground when the rig is transmitting and the orange lead is the correction voltage so it's uh, applying a uh, DC voltage to the uh, to a uh, diode of a reactor diode that's in in the VFO circuit here which is in this sealed cabinet and uh, basically it uses the circuit uses this uh, crystal down here this quartz crystal 20 megahertz as a reference and it samples the VFO frequency and applies a correction voltage to maintain it uh, I forget what the uh, what the accuracy is but it's I think it's close to crystal accuracy as long as it has correction voltage to apply and control the VFO. Now this green LED over here shows you the status of the of the device and I'll turn the audio up here. Um, if I bump the uh, the frequency it goes red. Now 
that means that it's detected me tuning once once I tune something in find a nice strong signal so once it's been sitting on a certain frequency it switches modes red it's not correcting frequency when it goes to green it's sort of locked it down so as long as I don't physically bump the radio the frequency will stay right on and, and I've noticed that it does I've tracked it from you know power up until several minutes of operation it's not drifting at all uh, but the only bad the only disadvantage of this device is that because of the way it works and I guess even if there's probably nothing that a cir this circuit's designed to basically to correct for drift you, you couldn't take this rig I think and and use it in a mobile application not you know the vibration uh, would, would still cause you to bounce around the band so I don't think it would be stable enough for mobile use but uh, anyway I would call this uh, a success this little circuit cost about 40 bucks took uh, a couple hours to build like I say I'd put it at about medium uh, difficulty level you just have to use a small low wattage iron the traces are really small and you know some of the parts are small quarter watt resistors and um, you just have to be careful to get good soldering in use a magnifying glass and make sure that like all your solder connections are good and I mean it worked right off the right off the top I didn't have to do any uh, re-soldering or checking or anything it just everything checked out and uh, works as advertised so let's say it's all systems go and you know continue working on this radio here this is a very much a work in progress this thing but I just talked to Mike in Canada VE6 AO on about 14 225 and uh, he heard me and we discussed the radio with him at length and uh, it was very cool so uh, that's it that's it for this uh, this video